This is an updated tutorial for the political aspects of Millennium Dawn, a mod for Hearts of Iron 4. In this video, I will explain to you all the important aspects to understand in as short and informative a matter as possible. Let's get going. Millennium Dawn excels compared to other Hoi 4 mods in that it provides much more detailed and immersive political mechanics, even going so far as to having an actual relationship between debt, economics, and political party politics. Let's start with how your government functions, which requires a proper breakdown to understand how exactly it functions. Going to your political menu, you may find it to be a little overwhelming compared to vanilla, but it's simple when we break it down. All parties are divided into outlooks, which represent the way modern politics function. Ideological principles and values are much more interchangeable and hybridized in the modern world, so it makes more sense to look at the world from the Western outlook for the older European and American-focused ideology compared to that of the emerging nations, exemplified through China as well as India and Russia. Western and pro-Western governments are democratic mostly and always have elections. They cover various types of oligarchies, liberalism, conservatism, and moderate social labor movements. They tend to be pro-market, IMF, and have some form of relationship with the EU and USA. Emerging outlook governments vary in terms of their actual ideology, but agree that the current global order is unacceptable through unfair structures. China is a major influencer of this movement, but typically it's more built around supporting a wider range of medium powers. Ideologically, they're often leftist, socialist, or even autocratic. These two major groups are best thought of in terms of East versus West or NATO versus BRICS to dramatically simplify things. Slavism represents radical Islam, getting its own grouping compared to the more moderate forms of Islamic ideology found in Emerging Outlook. They are very radical and hyper-conservative. Nationalistic governments are anything further right than typical conservatism and include monarchies, fascism, and military juntas. With the different types of parties out of the way, let's move on to how they function. On Millennium Dawn, unlike Vanilla, you can explicitly push them into power or just outright ban them if you like. Open up the party list and you can see these options on the right. Most countries in the game are democratic, meaning their popularity dictates who is in charge every election cycle, though there is a minimum amount of support needed to win. During an election, if the main party does not get enough, you will have the option to add parties to your coalition or allow someone else to try and form one. Any party added gets a bonus to popularity for their outlook. For example, if you are the Democrats as the US and add the Greens to take the election, the non-aligned outlook will grow in popularity while they're both in power. Change in party popularity is a lot more complicated than vanilla, with focus trees, national spirits, economic outlooks, stability debt, internal factions, and foreign influence all adding, which we will cover. It's also worth mentioning that if your ruling party loses popularity, it will result in a decrease in support for the outlook itself, meaning other parties will likely win if you're democratic or become strong enough to coup or start a civil war. In Millennium Dawn, every country has three internal factions. They represent generalized groups which tend to have major, if not dramatic, influence in the halls of power and economy of your nation. In order to change them, you have to save up the political power to do so, which is a lot. Great powers and superpowers are unable to do it at all due to the costs, due to the power of such groups within the nation being impossible to influence actively. They grant various bonuses, which makes natural sense to what they are such as international bankers decreasing your interest rate on debt and increasing office sector construction speed. Hover over them to see exactly what is given. Each faction has an opinion of the government based on events, focuses, and a few other minor things. If it goes below 50, you will get negatives instead of bonuses, so make sure to keep your relationship with them very good. Some focuses do change them automatically, so check for those in your focus tree before you spend the political power. A new feature added for political ideology in the mod is ideological powers, where your ideology itself allows for specific advantages and a disadvantage. To see them, click on this button and look at what they have currently as outlined below. The middle three show the advantages and the far right shows your negative. All of your country's parties are attached to the far left icon if you want to see which ones will get which bonuses. In order to show the political and economic power nations have in the game, a power level is shown for all countries in the national spirits. Your level is based primarily off your GDP in relation to the global economy. GDP being all of your factories combined, including civs, military factories, naval dockyards, and office complexes. It is reduced by any amount of foreign influence countries have on you, seen by either right-clicking your country or by going to the foreign influence screen in your decisions. This is a very, very valuable thing to have at higher levels, 
as it gives tons of political power and influence ability. The cost being all laws go up by a lot in terms of cost, so be wary when growing. Corruption is a problem that continues to plague most nations in the world at varying levels. Removing and rooting it out is an incredibly complex and hard thing to do, but in Millennium Dawn, it's based around political power. You can find your level in your political screen, and to lower it, you must spend the according power, which varies based on modifiers, but is set at a base cost of 300 political power. Corruption used to have some upside by giving political power itself, but now it's just bad, reducing your research speed, decreasing taxes gain, as well as a host of other problems. Get rid of it as soon as possible. The modern world politically is a much less violent place, at least in terms of outright wars. Pax Americana, Pax Nuclear, whatever you want to call it, the situation is unique in human history. Without the ability to outright invade and take nations into their sphere by force or subjugation, many have adapted. Political and economic influence is the name of the game now, championed through soft power, though with the occasional coup or civil war directly cost. In this mod, you are able to play this game yourself through the influence system. Based on your power level, as mentioned earlier, you are able to influence countries and grow your amount on them. This is done by right-clicking them and spreading influence. A left-click will make you automatically do this, which is limited by power level. Right-clicking it will do it manually. This costs 1.5 political power a day automatically or 50 manually. Ad nations will also do this, including on you, so it will be a bit of a chess game if you want to gain it. Doing so gives several advantages, but the most subtle yet powerful is if you have high influence on a country, it will make them get a modifier to their outlook. Let's say you build up 99% influence on Liberia as America. They will automatically gain support for Western outlook, making the government stay or flip to one similar to yours. The most active ways to use it is to manipulate politics, which spends influence to actively make their political support more like yours. Attempting to coup the government, towards one like yours, which requires at least 30% support, though its chances go up at each percent higher than that, and exploit resources, which gives you 30% of the civilian industry or outright puppet them. You can also send military aid if you have military industrial complexes as a faction or direct cash to gain more influence with a particular country. As mentioned before, you will have other countries doing this on you, so all of those negatives may be done to your own country. But your decisions to see your influence overview Combating foreign influence is doable over time, but requires political power to be used. It's possible to raise your natural protection form of it with a spy agency, so make sure to use one. At some point, you will want to fight wars. I'm sure very good reasons, and not simply because the map looks nice or exploit your hardworking neighbors. Regardless, the limit for what this is like in base game is world tension, as well as your foreign intervention law. What level of world tension found at the top right is needed to claim territory decides on these laws. The further down you go, the easier it is. Neo imperialism itself has no such restrictions and can be done whenever you want. But keep in mind, doing so raises the world tension itself and allows Western countries to start protecting and intervening in wars, including yours. Imperialism can, however, only be done by Slavist outlook and nationalistic countries. Let's cover a few of the key decisions in the mod as well. Your political decision menu gives you a few key details, such as whether you have elections or not, term limits, and what term your current leader is on. You can, for political power, retire your current leader, hold special elections, increase or decrease the threshold of winning, meaning what percent of support your ruling party or coalition needs to actually win, or increase the popularity of a certain outlook. Doing propaganda campaigns does cost part of your GDP, which can be a lot, so be careful using it. In your foreign influence options, you can also do propaganda campaigns to reduce your foreign influence by a lot, though it does increase always your nationalist support. William Dawn has a few special map modes I want to point out on the bottom right. They allow you to see the global population levels, ideology, influence levels of your nation, and GDP, which is very useful and nice to have. Make sure to use them. It's also worth pointing out that NATO is a thing just like real life. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization is a defensive pact whose Article 5 of their charter states an attack on one is an attack on all. NATO is the bedrock of the modern political order, especially in the West. Well, what it means for you is that if you attack one of its members, the USA and Europe are going to go to war with you. In order to get around this, for all you naughty warmongers, pushing a nation to an emerging outlook or nationalist government, which is likely make them suspend elections, will get them kicked out. So, do that what you will. And lastly, the ledger. For all you EU4 masochists out there, this will look familiar. The mod has added a feature to allow you to easily look up nations' economic and political stats, as well as a full military breakdown. 
This is one simple hack your intelligence agency does not want you to know. That concludes this political tutorial from William Dawn. I have a full series covering all aspects of the mod and a Hoya 4 tutorial series as well, so check those out if you're interested. I also make casual content on YouTube, run William Dawn roleplay games in my Discord, and stream on Twitch. Shameless plugs aside, I will catch you later.